today at the First Presbyterian Church of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Judy Slater, and here in the service today is Matt Demas as our musician, and our liturgists today are Lamar and Darana Tolson. And if you don't recognize that last name, it's Darcel's daughter and her husband, Lamar. And they have some help with their cute little baby, Damarian. And they'll be our liturgists today. I want to remind you, we do have a bulletin online. If you would like to participate in the responsive and unison readings, and also tonight at six o'clock in the church yard, we will have an outdoor worship service and we will serve communion during that service. So we invite you, weather permitting, to come and enjoy worship gathered outside. Let us join our hearts together and worship God with a call to worship. This is the day which the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Let us worship God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day. We praise you for your great and mighty works. And we ask that you speak to our hearts and our lives today. Let us see your presence in the midst of our lives and in the midst of the world. And show us what you want us to do to be your people in this time. Please give us the faith that we need to follow you. Amen. Let us humble ourselves before God with the prayer of confession. The Holy Spirit calls each of us, but we are often reluctant to heed the call. The wind of the Spirit blows and draws us onward, yet we cling to the fragile familiarities, to securities, and to safety. Help us to risk letting go to stand free as your servant people. Help us to capture visions of the future so that we can truly be the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. God seeks to free us from our burdens, free us to live and to love. For in Jesus Christ, we are Loved, we are accepted, and we are forgiven. Through 31, and also Romans 14, 10 through 12. Then the angel of God, who had been traveling in front of Israel's army, withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and Israel. Throughout the night, the cloud brought darkness to one side and light to the other side, so neither went near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and all that night the Lord drove back drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided and the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The Egyptians persuaded them and all the Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen to follow them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down the pillar of the fire and cloud at Egyptian army and threw it into the confusion. He jumped the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, Let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting them against Egypt. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians, their chariots, and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back into its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. The day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. Romans 14, 10 through 12. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. The word of our Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. Our three-year-old grandson, Brett, started back to daycare this month, and his dad picked him up one day and said, how was daycare today? And Brett said, there was this boy who tried to take a toy from this girl, and he used his lightning speed to help her. Apparently, our grandson has lightning speed. What superpower would you like to have? Several years ago, my daughter-in-law and I were talking about after the Twilight movies came out, about vampires and what powers they had. And she was telling me what vampire powers they had from what she learned from other series. And my son sat and listened for a while. He finally said to us, you two do know this isn't real, right? This is just pretend. We love our superheroes. We're fascinated with superheroes in our society. We love it when people fight against evil and win the day. There is one superhero, however, that has no real superpowers in and of himself. And that, of course, is Batman. Batman doesn't have any superpowers. He has some really cool equipment that helps him fight evil. Well, we continue our series today on Moses. Moses is leading the people of Israel out of slavery, out of Egypt. And Moses is a superhero of the faith. In today's story, he parts the Red Sea so the people of Israel can walk through on dry land. But like Batman, Moses really has no superpower himself. It's God's power that is leading, guiding, and working through Moses. This one is the most spectacular miracle, however, recorded in the Bible, the parting of the Red Sea. How amazing it must have been to be there and to experience this. After all the plagues in Egypt, Pharaoh said, finally said, the people could go. But then as they were leaving, he changes his mind and sends his army out to get them. Now, this is a fierce, well-trained, well-equipped army. And they are out to get the people of Israel and bring them back. So here are the people of Israel following Moses, and they get to the Red Sea. This fierce army is behind them, and a sea is in front of them. And they look to Moses and say, were there no graves in Egypt? that you had to bring us out here to die? You know, for them, the, the army behind them was not going to be good. If they were captured, they would certainly be tortured or killed. And the, the sea before them meant drowning. And they thought it was a hopeless 
situation. But we know the rest of the story. Moses lifts his hand and the sea parts and they have dry land to walk through. Now that seems like a pretty cool uh, ending to the story, right? Except imagine yourself in their shoes. The army is behind you. The sea has now parted before you. However, there are these big walls of water. So as they're walking through on dry land, they don't know if these walls of water are going to hold or if they're going to let go and drown them. Furthermore, they don't know what's on the other side of this sea. Will there be another army over there telling them to not come? So at this point, they really don't know what to do. And I'm sure at this point, it was all pretty scary. An army behind who could very well follow them on the dry ground, walls of water that might let go any moment to an unknown land in front of them. But Moses has said to them, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. What we can learn from Moses and the people of Israel is that God hears our cries and provides the way even if it's not the way we were thinking or hoping. We just need to look for the dry ground so that we can put one step in front of us. For the people of Israel, the dry ground was the best option. The army certainly wasn't. So what God presented to them, as scary as it may have been with the walls of water and whatever lay ahead, they had to put one foot in front of the other on this dry ground. And so we know the rest of the story. They made it to the other side and the Egyptian army did not. And so they were saved from slavery and from Egypt. When all the dangers and troubles and scary times surround us, we too can look for the solid ground. Where can we put one foot in front of the other and keep moving on solid ground? We live in scary and confusing times. We have this pandemic that continues on and we don't know what to do. Decisions keep being made daily on what's good and not good to do. We don't know what's going to happen and we don't know what's on the other side of this thing. And so it's a pretty scary situation. But where is the dry ground for us in this today? Where is the way that God is leading us now on solid ground? Maybe it's to just stay safe, do what we know to do, wear our masks, social distance, and wash our hands. Maybe staying safe is putting one foot in front of the other as God gets us through this time. We also have in our year what people are calling a second pandemic, and that is the racial unrest. As we become very aware of racism in our society. There are many swirling issues with this. There's fear of the violence. There is the pitting the support of the police against the support of protesters. There's also the politicizing of the issue. So in this issue, where is the solid ground? What can we know as true and right and good in the midst of all these swirling issues? The dry ground is, I think, the knowledge that racism is not a part of God's kingdom plan. Racism is not right, it is not good, and it is not true. 
It is not what God intends for us in God's love and reconciliation and God's desire for us to join in that work. So maybe that's our dry ground at this moment. Whatever the swirling issues are saying, the knowledge that racism is wrong is our dry ground for what we do, putting one step in front of the other. And what about our deep political division? These next two months are going to be brutal. Right now, our country is polarized by this election. I heard someone say recently, after one of their neighbors put up a political sign, I used to think they were nice people because obviously the political sign was against what they thought. And this is dividing families and friends. It's dividing our country. Where is the dry ground in this? Well, maybe the dry ground is that we vote for the way we think is right, but then we pray for God's will to be done standing firm and seeing the salvation of the Lord work out. And of course, we also have these weather related issues as if the first three were not enough. Right now in, the, in this year, we've had hurricanes and these wild fires that just don't seem to quit. Where's the dry ground in all of that? Maybe it's the knowledge that there are people who need help in our country right now, and they need our prayers. So whatever we can do to help, and certainly continue to pray for them. And what about our own personal problems? You know, our lives can be pretty complicated with health issues, financial issues, job-related issues, relationship issues. We can have all sorts of complicated issues going on in our lives. And it may feel like the enemy is at our back and the water threatens to overwhelm us. So where can we see solid ground? Moses says, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand firm and look for what is good, for what is right, for what we know is true, and put one foot in front of the other, trusting that God is at work in all of this. Whatever happens in this life, we have been given solid ground in Jesus Christ. He's our true superhero. In Jesus Christ, God shows us that God is with us through all of this. In Jesus Christ, God shows us that he hears our cries. He hears our cries of pain. He hears our cries for help. And he knows about the trouble we are having. God provides the way of love and life to us here and now and through Jesus Christ eternally. Jesus makes it pretty simple for us to see the solid ground. He says it's as simple as this, love God and love others. All of the prophets and law hang on those two things, love God and love others. That's our solid ground test. Is what we're doing loving God and loving others? And God makes it simple for us by sending Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God sent the son into the world not to condemn the world but that the world might have life through him. Moses said, stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand firm, put one foot in front of the other, and know that God is with us in this life, and that this life is not the final answer. That God is there for us on the other side as well. 
and the kingdom of God is glorious. It is here and now in part and will be revealed in fullness when the time comes. Stand firm and see the salvation of the Lord. For God hears, God knows, and God is with us. Let us pray. God, we thank you that we are not here left alone to figure all this out ourselves, but we do need your help. And so we lift up to you all these things we've mentioned, all these problems in the world, all these problems that you know are in our lives. And we ask for you to show us the solid ground so that we can put one foot in front of the other and walk in your salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith, a statement of what we believe. We believe in the living God, the creator of humankind, 
who redeems and sustains the universe by power and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, who lived in Palestine. Because of his words and works, his way with others, his use of suffering, his conquest of death, we know what human life ought to be like and what God is like. We believe that the Spirit of God is present with us now and always and can be experienced in prayer, in forgiveness, in the Lord, in sacraments, the fellowship of the church, and in all we do. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. Holy God, when the enemy is at our back, and the waters threaten to overwhelm us, and the future seems scary. Help us to remember to stop and look for you and trust in your love. Give us the faith that we need at this time to trust that you are here with us and still at work, and that miracles still happen. We pray that you will overthrow evil powers, Right what is wrong. Feed and satisfy those who thirst for justice, so that all your children may freely enjoy the life you intend for us. And this week, we especially remember 9-11, 19 years ago. And we ask for continued healing, protection of our country, and peace for our land. We continue to pray for the end of this pandemic, and we pray for all those who are suffering because of it. We continue to pray for our children, our teachers, our administrators, our parents. We ask that you will keep everyone safe and guide all of the decisions being made and let learning happen, even in the midst of all of this. We pray for those who are suffering from natural disasters, from the hurricane, from the wildfires. We ask that you will help them, give them hope, and just help them rebuild their lives. We pray for those dehumanized by racism and ask for a true humanity realized in your love, that there may be true peace and justice for all. Hear our prayers for those on our prayer list. Hear our prayers for the needs we have ourselves. As we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn today is How Firm a Foundation.
to lead you, behind you to protect you, beneath you to support you, and beside you to be your friend. Do not be afraid. Go in peace and love to serve the Lord. And may the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen. Amen.